Hello and welcome to our playthrough of the Beginner's Guide. A uh, guide how to be a beginner, probably. I don't know. You know, we've never played it before. Uh, basically, what I've heard is that uh, if you enjoyed the Stanley Parable, you should enjoy this because it's kind of similar, but also nothing like it at all. So, I hope you boys and girls will enjoy it as we go into this very creepy man voice. Mm, yes, time to begin the Beginner's Guide. Please make sure the audio is on. Don't you worry about that. Now, whether or not it's recording, that's an entirely different question, but uh, it sure is on. All right, let's see here. Hi there. Oh. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. All right, My there, David Cage. Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can oh, walk can... around here, by the way. Oh, thank you. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Can we but control what jump? What I like is that even yeah. though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So. It's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together is because I find his games powerful and interesting and I'd like this collection to reach him to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay, that was a lot more than uh, I expected. <laughs> Did, didn't expect to just go hard into like explanations of games and dialogue, so good, good. We, we're starting in a spot where I'm already caught off guard, so <laughs> this is a good start. Also, do you think he called himself Coda because he's a coder? You know, like a coda. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Whisper machine. Whisper machine. Okay. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Yeah, it looks like Steam Greenlight every day of the week. Am I right, my fellow gamers? Oh, all right. This is, this is apparently... Now inspired by not CSGO or CSS or CS Source or no, that's the same thing. Hold on, CS 1.6 or CS No Steam or CS whatever else that I forgot to mention. It's good to know. Dude, dude, don't even worry about it. We're a god at FPS. There's no flashlight. Like no flashlight. This game was abandoned mid development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters no or enemies somewhere. Though. 
but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Oh, that's good. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin I thought there were no forces to be neutralized. You can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Oh, dude, you're totally right. There we go. There's this, the messed up uh, JPEGs, if you will. Yeah. Can we? Oh, we can keep going this way. All right. Let's explore more of Code Fifty One's environments. Oh, oh, good. Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth. We've I, uh, hit that part of the game. Sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been oh. able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past. Oh, thank you, please. And thank you. I don't know what, what that means, but basically okay, thank this you. This is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. And then you whisper to the machine, Please turn off! Hey, you there, in the engine room. What? You could save us all. Hey, sorry? That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I mean, I'm an unnamed man. I'm basically space marine guy, except no legs. So, you know, sure, why not? Let me did pause it. here for a second. What you just experienced stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Wait, so did you fix the bug? Or... Oh, we float through the world. Oh, great. Oh, there's Labyrinth we can now look at. I wonder if you could have actually gone through it properly. The beam causes Before you he to start floating. Teleports you. And this is an important moment for him. Can we move? No, because we can't yes, move. this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but What's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. <laughs> right, he Let's moved away from this. Let's take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. He, made, he left this AAA project behind then, switched to something a little bit more smaller and indie. Oh good, the past was behind her. All right. What is this, like, Windows screensaver? Yep. Oh. In this game, you oh, can, can only, walk, only backwards. walk backwards. 95. Windows screensaver 95. Nope, left, no left and right. No left and right. All right. Oh. This is a little bit disconcerting, I will be honest. Don't really like... Oh! But the future so it's a short could not be seen. relatively minimalist experiment combining oh, right. motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous the game, but actually it seems to be more Whoa. focused, more change. complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. When she stops and looks, it becomes clear. Okay. What does what become clear? But the future is always behind her. How will she find the strength? To, to survive? To stay out? Oh, to confront it. There is no more door here. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. D sure, dude. Oh, November 28, or 2008, not 2018. Uh, quite a few years away from that, and by that I mean we're only one year away from that. And by that I mean we're actually only a few months away from that. I'm just keep amending the statement until it makes sense. Oh, no, we can walk forward. I instinctively was trying to walk back the entire time. You are now entering. S nothing. N nothing. And All right. That's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. 
December 20, 2008, god damn it. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Nonsense in it. Nearly every direction. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Is Koda a I guy who- I it's tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. Oh. Okay, well was Koda a guy who, uh, worked on the Stanley Parable? Koda 51? Alright. Well, this looks like it's a whole bunch of nothing, and uh, if our narrator is to be trusted, even though the beginner's guide has made me uh, a little iffy on placing trust in the narrator, uh, we just kind of, I guess, go up these stairs and experience the joys of what awaits us above. Oh, there you go. Stock source sounds. Stock counter-strike sounds. Why are we slowing down? Are we becoming a fatter and fatter man as we walk up these stairs, or is there a stamina bar that I don't know about? Once oh. you've been slowed to an Great. absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening backwards. the door at all? No. all right. Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. No, why thank you. Did you keep hacking all of Code's games and making them questionably better? Alright, stand on X, starting at bear for three hours, you run a shop inside your own body, selling your organs, strategically to make the most money before you die, a game of only motivational quotes, a played one after the other, while the player cannot move. And nice, and you must address and rally a group of eager games. press reporters, live on a boat, taking orders from the captain, the captain is always wrong. That's that. That's good, I like Koda that one. often tell me that he so didn't mind if people floating. thought of him as cold or to distant. He said that he sharks. knew that he was actually a vibrant <laughs> this and one. compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. Ooh. It can be a very slow climb to get there. This one's a little too real right here. Construct a wall. Uh, read an enemy's email is to learn how to beat them. That's a cool concept. Press U to surrender. All right. Play as the camera. Filming in oh, advertisement. Something, something, something. January 2009. Ready, set, fish. All right. Let's, is this uh, extreme fishing or whatever that thing is on the um, Android store? Whatever it's called. I, that, that I've never played, but heard everybody say it's amazing. And absolutely the only game worth any money on the Android store. Not to uh, fire shots of other games. Oh, all right. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. I'm not Go sure. Ahead and see if you can solve it. I'm not sure this is a puzzle, but sure. Oh, look at that! The door opens. Um. I would presume that there is either another switch inside here, which it doesn't look like it. All right, let's. What if we? Shit. We done goofed. Oh no, there is no other switch. Oh, we 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 we've hit a fail state. Oh, there is another switch on the other side of the door. Don't forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Oh, okay. We're see it a lot. What about these three dots? We're gonna see these bowling ball holes around the place as well, or is that? Is that a one-time deal? Alright, let's, uh, what's in here? Oh, just a whole load of nothing. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Wow, look at this super cool hacker man. Oh, okay. What is all of this? Oh my god, it goes on forever. Oh, all right, all right. How about that, there was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Can we? Get I actually find anywhere? it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, oh, we can't a get dull anywhere. exterior concealed a rich interior, and then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same: is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. Mm -hmm. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? It's to be understood. Oh. oh. 
One Wario 2009. All right. Are we gonna be now leaving again, or now entering, or now exiting? You know, uh -huh. none so of them were right. This, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. What? What? There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Narrator slash Weber, I think was the last name? Man, I think you're placing too much faith in Coda here. The Great and Lovely Descent. Oh, must have been inspired by the movie. Oh, well, we're just in a room full of white. Did we jump out the window from the Stanley Parable? This is a freaking upgrade in graphics. Look at that. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Sure. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and uh, cannot I already do. knew that narrative. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for this game development. Streetwise fool. Okay. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Yep. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy oh, linear corridors. That. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. I'm not sure the source is built the for corridors, but what sure. Kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Alright, guess we'll go downstairs into some linear, boxy corridors. And maybe we'll find boxy down there, who knows. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, what is this? Have we found secrets? Have secrets been found? Oh. Well, I guess it was to be expected from Coda. Hmm. Oh, alright. We are now in strange textured environment. That's fine. This is exactly where I expected this to go. I'm not surpri <laughs> surprised. <laughs> no, no, not not even a little bit. No, just... That's, that's totally not my uh, lying voice. Oh god, I have done goofed. Oh, we have fucked it up forever. Oh. No, we actually... Like, skipped a lot of nonsense. Alright. Fair enough. Is it there? Oh, there's super, like, barely visible glass here. Alright. Fair enough. As you can clearly see, puzzle platformers are not my uh, forte. They're not my uh, forte. Forte. I could go for 12T. Look, I don't know what I'm talking about. Just, <laughs> just indulge me here for a second. Alright. Just a bunch of cattle things. Oh, distortion is no good. Not a fan of distortion. Okay. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, this is an elevator. All right. I guess we'll keep going. No, we can't keep going. Please. Oh, um, we, you, you sure you want me to go this way and not like that game? Or oh, we're this in a cell. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. No, you know what? I want you to uh, keep me in there for an entire hour. I want the full Stanley Parable experience. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, that whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, Wait. all this work goes into the game, oh, yeah, okay. why not make it playable and accessible? Right. And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. Wow, well, sounds like you guys waste a lot of time instead of developing the Stanley Parable. No wonder it turned out to be so fucking hot trash. Now I'm kidding. No hot trash there. It, it was actually it, on a on a trash scale. It was a very mild and not interesting trash. Which, which is to say that the trash part was mild and uninteresting. The 
I'm trying to say it was a good game. I don't know if that's coming across very well or not, but... Oh, there's a triple dot again. Can we examine it? Slash interact with it? No? Alright. Fuck you then, Coda. Uh, oh, this thing again. It's there the puzzle go. again. With the exact same solution as the last time. Oh yeah? You sure about that? Because I... Don't know if I trust you. There's still no clear indication wow. of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Well, at least you finally fixed the sky cube, even though you can clearly see that there's still like edges there. So I guess he's getting better as a developer, you know. Everybody hurts sometimes, but also everybody, uh, you know, learns through mistakes and experience. So there you go. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Listen to the sound of my voice. There's a furnace right here. Can we click it? No. Can we click it? Oh, this is just a floating wardrobe. No, it's actually grounded. No, it's floating. It's floating. Slightly above the ground, but it is floating. Okay, so three boys listening. Yo, you there? Did you come from up above? Here, What's Koda up there? Here, begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use yes. the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was a there was an enormous prison. I was I spent uh, uh, hours in. Yes, there were these floating and colored blocks. Let's talk about the prison. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Do you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes I did, that was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I prefer not to tell you. After all, we'll only just meant. Yeah, let's just go with that. What? But you you don't understand. We are trapped here. That puzzle is our only escape. We need to get through it through it. You think you want to get through, but trust me, you don't. Let me describe it for you. Let me tell you all of what is over there. Alright, I'll tell you how to solve it. Sure. Wonderful. Is that me telling them? Well, what is it? What's the answer? Please speak to me. Tell me how to escape. Tell me how to free, get free from this prison. I must know. It's the most important thing. There must be an ending. Oh, they switch between speak and listen when they're talking and not talking. All right. I guess you gents have a good day reading books. No, nope, the books are away from you, so I guess you're not reading them. All right, goodbye. Have a good time and all that. Oh, three more gentlemen. And we're in the same exact room. Sweet. Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, I've been right here this entire time. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. Why would I sit in the black space? Oh, it's plenty peaceful. It may not seem that way at first, but you'll come to think so in time, eventually. I really like the speak listen thing that flips back and forth. It's kind of cool. It's definitely unique. Can we? Okay, I thought we actually couldn't walk through it. And now in an endless set of stairs. And they so we make one this. last descent down to the final floor of the level. Is it endless? No, it's not endless. And here I was expecting more from Coda. To fuck us over with endless stairs. Oh, and here's the title screen of the game. Oh, sort of. Not really. I mean, the, this thing's in it. It's a lamppost. A lamppost, yes, thank you. I okay, couldn't I can't remember tell the word for it. Why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. 
I think you may be putting too much faith in this lamppost, Mr. Uh, Mr. Narrator Man. Also, we all entered what is clearly a, uh, a horror survival game out on the green light of Steam, which is now dead, so I don't know why I keep referencing it. This game is connected. Uh, as you walk around, you can leave notes. Connected by the internet, maybe? All notes you see are left by other players. Oh, so it's Dark Souls. Let me start by looking at the ceiling. Cool. Is this what the note is? Nice, nice room, not. Okay. How do we leave it? So, message? first off, oh. I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. Okay. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. What do you this mean, was game? shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone what else was fuck? doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. <laughs> In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too bushy trying to get his attention. Uh, nah, it's fine. I was over enthusiastic. Whoa, but holy shit. He was very shit. gracious about it and very patient with me. Can we walk off the edge? And I cooled off eventually. No, we cannot. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me, Manager Tom? Hello. Reasonable. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not Everyone doing anything for this. you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of hey. them. Hey. Either this way, place makes me sad. to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs <laughs> and has no way to express them except as scattered and Balls. unheard okay. voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. How is there wood and grass and concrete here? What the fuck? You, you're right. But it's ironic, what? isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. <laughs> and then I feel less lonely too. All right. We're getting to some, some deductions that we're making, but sure. You're putting a lot of faith in, uh... What the shit is this kind of... You're putting too much faith in this, uh... Coda boys. Um... I don't know. Poeticism, I guess. <laughs> Here in this place, the sailors are looking for... You know what? I'll be honest. I'm probably gonna go ahead and stop reading these. Hey guys, just looking for someone to talk to. At some point. Um... Probably at... I refuse to believe probably this room, and then we're gonna go ahead and... But ass but I mean, if we wouldn't have stopped there, we, uh, or if we would have stopped there, we would have missed that beautiful message. I need to go to the fucking bathroom. Recognize me, please. Yeah, dog, there's too many messages. To read them all, nothing here. Go back to listen to that guy. Or maybe we don't actually read them all, because we get trapped in a room somewhere? A free t-shirt! Need other side door why you too? Make game include store can open door thanks. Open sesame. Door how open. Do 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 Someday I will meet the person who made this and I will stab him. I help people because of the internal good feeling I get. Okay. New room. Do you hear the, the chimes? They keep you going, don't they? I would like very much to be desired. Alright. Scared of writing something, don't want to feel judged. Not, it's not very crowded here. And don't bother. We can go. On. You know what? No, we're good. <laughs> I mean, you know, we we can keep exploring all these messages and determining Coda's thought process, but we'll, I prefer the narr narrator do it for us, to be entirely honest. Because um, this is going to take an extremely large amount of time, and we you know we're trying to keep keep the action going. You know, keep the pace fresh. Oh. Can we fall in? Oh, we can't fall in. Surprise. I am not safe. Did you have to say I'm not safe here? I'm not safe. Okay. Oh god, now I've got the hiccups. Probably shouldn't have drunk any beer before doing this, but hey. I'm not the smartest man. 
Also, I'm just kidding. It was just a lot of tea. Painting, what does it mean? It was definitely not, uh, not beer. Wink, wink. <laughs> All right. Now you definitely know I've drunk some beer because uh, I'm starting to act a little freaky. A little weird, I guess was the word I was trying to go for, but hey, let's go with freaky now. Since we already established that narrative, let's just... Let's just push it all the way through and see where it leads us, eh? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Oh, there's some whispering. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. I think you're reading way too much into this, In dog. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. So, what kind of weirdo places a bunch of symbols that are like, oh my god, I don't know how to solve your puzzle, I don't know how to solve your puzzle, in front of a door that he has created and then knows how to solve the puzzle of. Like, a, what? A, and because there's I, this dark area between the doors, don't understand. a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Like, do you, do you see what I'm trying to say? You create a you create a puzzle that you know the solution to, then you po post a bunch of comments from yourself going, fuck, I don't know how to solve this thing. Somebody help. What? what? You weird man. <laughs> Why? Oh, now there's a bunch of typewriters. Wonderful. How do you leave notes? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's good. That is, that is clever. Oh, baby. Look at all these typewriters. None of which are animated or typewriting. Sounds good. Are you there? Please say something. I can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, 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 speak. Speak, 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 speak. Speak, 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 speak. Oh, we should probably cut the episode here. Alright, good. On those clickety-clacks, we'll cut it.